the high street is dead, right? Wrong. In the grand former BHS flagship store in Oxford Street, a swinger's crazy golf course is breathing new life into the collapsed retailer. The course, which has bars, restaurants and private space for up to 300 people at a time, will be joined downstairs this autumn by Market Hall's West End, a foodie market modeled on Barcelona's La Boqueria. The venture will be the UK's biggest food hall, run by Simon Anderson, the restaurateur behind the barbecue chain Pit Q, and property investor Andy Lewis Pratt. Another two market halls are on the cards, one inside the disused Fulham Broadway Tube Ticket Hall and another in the old Patch and Night Club, in Victoria. Further down Oxford Street, WeWork, the world's biggest co-working space provider, is looking at renting out space at Debenhams and the Crystal Maze Experience offering, immersive, team games for the over-18s is going great guns in Houston. Further east in the city, Italy's Italy is planning a two-story 42,000-square-feet food hall in the old RBS headquarters at 135 Bishopsgate and hopes to be open in 2020. Known as the Disneyland of Food, Italy already has 35 of these mega stores in cities from New York to Sao Paulo, which offer everything from cooking schools to markets. In Newcastle, Stack is opening a new £1 million leisure and retail centre made out of 60 shipping containers on the side of the former Odeon Cinema. With space for up to 50 small and medium-sized enterprises, Stack hopes to create 500 jobs. South Africa's Big Box Co., another retail developer with a focus on social innovation and regeneration, is looking for a site in Stoke for shopkeepers and local businesses. Just as Harry Selfridge revolutionized shopping at the turn of the last century with his trend-setting store in an unfashionable part of Oxford Street, so we are seeing a new breed of entrepreneur reinventing how we shop, eat and play. Whether enough people want to play golf, or can afford to eat out regularly, to support these new ventures long-term is the big question. New projects such as these stand a higher chance of surviving if people work and live close by. Center for Cities, the think tank, says that the most successful town centers are those where offices make up almost two-thirds of the commercial space. Bristol and Manchester are effective because retail makes up about 18% of all commercial space since office workers provide footfall for retailers to sell to. Worst are those with the highest number of vacant shops at 24% such as Newport, Blackpool and Bradford. Mark Robinson of regional retail investor Elandi reckons the high street is at present having a bipolar moment. On the one hand, there is a buzz of innovation in cities such as London and Manchester. On the other, many towns, even Leafy Ales Barrier High Wickham, face real challenges because so many BHS, House of Fraser and other chains are closing branches. A trendy, crystal maze experience or a box park is unlikely to work in these towns, so what's the market solution? Cutting business rates and taxing online retailers to make the playing field more even are no-brainers but need government action which is sorely lacking. More is needed, Robinson, who is also vice president of shopping center trade body Revo, suggests that the answer lies not just in housing but in ideas such as flexible working spaces in town centers to keep people closer to their work. With private equity and pension funds avoiding regional town centers, the funding gap is being filled by local authorities. They invested £3.8 billion into property between 2013 and last year. The more imaginative ones are buying town centre retail schemes, such as the Square in Camberley. It makes sense, the local authority borrows at 100% loan-to-value at low interest rates from the Public Works Loan Board, investing in property at yields of 5%. Local authorities have two good reasons for investing for the long term, to supplement their budgets but also to revive their town centres. Many have been criticized for paying over the odds for property but they should be encouraged to keep investing to bring life back into their communities. It's the cookie-cutter clone high streets that are dying, not the vibrant ones where people can work, live, eat and play, just as they did more than 100 years ago.